just want to go through how to make some money as an expat so that you can actually become an expat. Um, these are going to be quite quick because there's a lot of them, but these are some ideas to get you kick started. Get yourself a list like this and then put your own skills and other bits in there um, because you might find that you start off with a list where you're thinking, I've got nothing I can really offer. And then when you sit down and think about it, you've actually got a fair bit, you just weren't aware of it. First thing is, this list here is um, incomes, which can be done by the computer, remotely, etc. First one is drop shipping. If you have experience with drop shipping, please comment. Um, because myself, I've worked with it within a specific niche, but I'm looking at expanding out. And one of the key elements of this is, I say it's quite a lot, no man is an island, because if you can network with people that are selling similar products, but not the same, uh, everybody can benefit. So drop shipping is basically what you, what you have is you set up a website and Joe blog orders some batteries, some batteries off your website. You don't hold the stock of these batteries. They're in a factory in China or India or Pakistan, wherever. So they, the guy pays you for the batteries. You pay the dropship. The dropship then just mails it direct. So that is dropshipping. It's basically sending the stuff direct. You don't hold stock, which means you don't have to invest a lot. Also means you don't need a big warehouse to put everything in. And all the headaches that go with that. Uh, so that's dropshipping. Specialist services. Is there something you can do? Can you do accounting? Can you do Excel spreadsheet manipulation? Can you do websites, app design? You may have a specialist skill that you could actually be doing from anywhere on the planet. Teaching English takes a bit to get kick started, but there's a big market for teaching English. Um, I'm experimenting with this myself at the minute. But you can do that via Skype. You can do it um, via localized lessons. You can, there's multiple ways to do teaching English. Home-based office. Can you be doing, offering office services, answering the phone, doing the virtual chats? Um, doing the reception services, doing the accounting, doing the invoicing. You've got to remember, a printer doesn't need to be sat next to you anymore. A printer can be sat in somebody's office anywhere on the planet, and you could be printing off the letters that they need to be sending out, the invoices they need to send out, etc., etc. You could do it remotely. Transcription services. This one's been hammered a bit, but... I think there's still a bit of movement in there because YouTube also recognizes things like these videos could do with the transcription text for people that are unable to hear me or could be a different language. So they might want to translate it. So there is still work out there for transcription. Telesales, self-explanatory, phone bashing. When you think international phoning, don't think expensive phone bills. Think voice over IP. Now, voice over IP is not just Skype for cheap calls. There's direct ways to do it, and it's much cheaper than Skype is. Um, I can actually help you out on how to do that as well. Networking. Ties in with the telesales, telemarketing, sales generation, business generation. Whatever it is, it could be for a specific product, could be for setting up an event. Doesn't really matter. Networking has a potential business there because everybody wants a decision maker for a particular product. So you need to, it's hard to explain it in one line, <laughs> but you'll see that my LinkedIn, for example, has got over 500 connections. And there's everything from telemarketing, telesales, to the solar industry, to facilities management, because they're all decision makers within their own industries. So when somebody in India goes to me, Matt, I'm selling solar pan air panels in Kerala. Do you know anybody? Within my LinkedIn, yes. And then I make the contact because they won't be able to make the contact, you see, because they don't know the person. Uh, lead generation ties in with the networking, but it's not just that. Here in Spain, 
it's about 280 euros for listing a property 280 euros per property so with a lead generation business here that focuses purely on getting listings there's a phenomenal amount of cash just sat there waiting to be grabbed 280 euros a hit when I was doing lead generation for solar I was getting 70 to 80 dollars a lead doesn't sound a lot until I say ten thousand dollars a week with 45 people uh, that's profit so lead generation is still a biggie I would actually say focus more on the online lead generation and less on thinking faux because the online systems are getting around sort of a lot of the legislation that's tied in with phone bashing now um, because when somebody fills in a form online you can call them because they contacted you when you phone direct in the US UK it's actually illegal because you've canvassed you you phoned without their consent that's why lead generation online is a better because they've made the the contact to you but B it works 24 7 you know you don't have to be constantly on the other end of the phone get the right website set up with the right products they're coming to you so you get mortgages car insurance house insurance um, if you're not in the game already it's a big learning curve but that's why it's on this list because these can be done not only um, remotely but at any time so starting with lead generation you may take two years to get your get your head around it real estate mentioned earlier there's a lot of money in the real estate industry here in the Philippines uh, here in Spain it's about selling properties renting properties it's about marketing properties as you've seen I've started doing those videos if I can get a real estate agent to buy into that idea I can actually push that advertising now I'm looking at charging $150 a video uh, 150 euros a video that means that we come around we'll do the video put it together and then we market it we'll push it into Facebook Twitter everywhere um, there's a market for that there's a bloody huge market that's untouched on that um, you need to get yourself into that because I am <laughs> advertising ties in with the, the real estate and other bits and pieces Craig's Craigslist Gumtree the free ads etc etc little Jimmy's trying to sell his house it's been on the market for two years it's not going anywhere but if you started hammering all the free sites on a regular basis with your latest products not only are you selling little Jimmy's house but people see you there so they go to your website and they see Maria's house, little Jimmy's, Fred's, whatever. But also some companies will pay you to do it for them. Um, that's quite strong in the American market. Car insurance I've mentioned already. But there's also the, the fact that you're full of expats. There's expats everywhere. They all want good insurance. They want reliable insurance. They want insurance that never will cover them. They want insurance that actually works become an insurance broker I'll stick broker on there or an agent doesn't really matter but wherever you are there's people that need insurance and as you see those can be done anytime anywhere we'll just call that anytime well any these are going home this is going back to let's call it home home being the country that you left in the first place now what you have open to you is contracting work which is what I try to do or try and avoid to do I'm struggling to get some at the minute because of the, my location there's loads of work in London but because I'm based West Midlands they don't want to pay the hotel so they hunt around in London first because all the works the schools around London um, you got the seasonal work which also ties into the contracting because um, I used to be an exhibition carpenter a long time ago um, used to do from February for three months then we do the rush up to the Christmas so seasonal works available which means you can hop backwards and forwards 
The reason these ones are pretty good is you can go back home and also back, go back to where you're traveling to or living. So, you know, like me, I go from the Philippines to the UK, do two months contracting, then back to the Philippines. Um, work when needed. This one can be quite useful, um, but it's getting much harder due to the influx of uh, Europeans into the UK. You used to be able to get a lot of agency work where you could basically just do a crap job, take the money, build it up for two, three months, then go back to the Philippines or wherever. A little bit harder these days, so it is worth building relationships with some companies because they'll know when they want you and you'll say, oh, I'm only looking for this about three, four months of the year. Is there anything we can work out? Because I'm reliable, I'll turn up, I'll make sure I'm here. And some companies might do it. I've got a friend who does junk mail. Um, does all the, the pens and the envelopes. He is very seasonal. He does all the charity stuff. So at certain times of the year, that's very, very busy. So with things like that, they may appreciate it because it means they don't have to get an agency involved. Agencies cost them money. Annual leave. Or um, a sabbatical. Maybe you just want to take a year out or something else. Have a chat with your employer first because they may actually have some flexibility to let you take the year out. Not all of them, obviously, um, but some of them like to do it and like to promote themselves as a company that likes its employees. So that is still an option for some companies. It's worth asking. Um, whatever you're doing, build your network. Build your network and when you're back, in the UK or wherever, build your network. These often are linked with a network. So as I was saying, with these guys that do the junk mail, it's as and when needed. You only get that because it's in your network. Because you may know somebody who works there and says, oh, Matt, um, John's looking for somebody for the next three weeks. Um, and then you go and work there for three weeks and you find out that he's always got work January, February, March, and he struggles to get people to do it you say well I can make myself available as long as you will commit to me in the same way and then that comes out of the network but also so does finding out these people home-based office maybe there's a guy that's got a taxi business or something where you can actually run his stuff remotely and go in and say I'll do it at half the cost sat on my back sat on my backside in the Philippines um, it's possible. You need to extend your network on a regular basis. Rent your house out. Very obvious one. Rent it out and use the money to uh, live abroad. Um, an obvious one if you actually got a property to rent out in the first place. So that's, that's our home, what you do back when you go back to the West. Now what do you do locally? With local businesses, you need to make sure you can legally do it. Um, I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday because he wants to own a certain business in the Philippines, and I just said, but you can't do that. And it's like, yeah, but you do it. I said, I don't own nothing. My wife owns it. Um, it's like, oh, that makes sense. Because of the way the laws are in the Philippines, you can't open a lot of the businesses. Your wife can. Your girlfriend can. Your mate down the pub can. But if you're doing that, make sure you control the bank, the finances, and reduce your risks. Um, you don't want liabilities when they turn around and order 100,000 pesos worth of aircon or whatever, and then sell it. But the business is tied to you in some way. So local businesses can work, but they're very, very scattered. If you look at the Philippines, you'll find that there's local businesses for the call centers. There's people doing farming, there's people doing uh, bars and restaurants, all sorts. A bit of advice is go in there knowing nothing. I know even if you come from a background with a lot of knowledge, go there knowing nothing. Because half the problem that people face in this is they assume they know it all when they first start. Don't. Assume you know nothing. When you go into another country, the culture's different. Um, for example, when I was in Oman, you'd think, oh, well, just open a bar. You've got no hope. 
In fact, you need a card to even drive over the border to get alcohol and bring it back. So those local things, I mean, that, that's just an example. Those local things could affect your idea drastically. The same is do not expect expat support. Um, I say this in the sense of somebody who owns a bar. Because all the expats go, yeah, we'll use it every week, blah, blah, blah. And then once it's open, they've had a few beers, and they're like, it's cost me an extra five five pesos. I'll drink this down the road. That's what they do. They disappear. There's no loyalty there. But don't assume it's you. They do it everywhere. People do that. The It's the same in the UK. Because people will buy a restaurant or a pub or etc. And think that their friends and family are going to drink and eat there every night. But they only went to a bar and restaurant prior to that once a month. They ain't coming every night. Don't rely on that business. That business is not real. It's just an initial boost, a bit of support for you. They don't owe you nothing and you don't owe them nothing. So do not rely on that sort of thing. But local businesses, there are things you can make money on. Um, but you need to invest a bit of time. I would say spend zero money and learn the local culture and pitfalls. So that's local business. Teaching English, we're back here again. Teaching English, depending where you are, it's Thailand, Vietnam, etc. You can teach in English locally. China can teach English locally. Philippines, everybody speaks English. But it doesn't mean you can't set up an English school. Um, I would seriously look at setting up teaching people English to teach English. Um, I'll discuss that later because I've got the setup. If somebody wants to get involved with it and we, we can run it and see where it goes, then get in touch because I've got the building, I've got the computer set up, I've got it good to go. Just need somebody that's actually on the ground to make this work for me and with me. Uh, call center. Call centers, be aware. Don't assume you can just go there and set one up because um, you can do that. But as I keep telling people, the hard bit's the customers. The rest of it is easy. Um, if you've got customers, the rest of it can be done. Um, I've got a call center. I've got access to a lot of call centers. Um, they all have their agents, everything ready to go, primed. What they want is customers. So my personal view on this is don't waste your time trying to set up your own call center. The country's full of them. What you want is the customers. You get the customers, the rest of it we can sort out. Um, that's one of the things I will say about it. Unless you've got a unique product that you want to market and sell yourself, you do not need a call center. There's, a, there's so many of them out there now. Expat services. Here in Spain, I would say it's one of the most rogue things going. Um, Philippines is not as bad. I would say the expats here are worse than Philippines immigration services with the corruption. Expats here will rob you blind. Um, the Here in Spain. They charge for everything. And phenomenal rates. Stuff that is way above what they should be doing. I'm talking charging $120 for something that's free. Um, that sort of rip off and not for one thing they'll charge you for five items you need so they rip me off for about a thousand euros over a thousand dollars absolute crooks um, but there is a market for doing it reasonably correctly and that's why I say there is expat services people want their visas done regularly people want their driving licenses done regularly people want their insurance sorted out the, the car um, servicing, whatever stuff that involves engaging with the local community. There's a lot of people that just don't want the hassle anymore. They're, they're retiring or whatever. You can make money doing the expat services. If you don't know what to do, go online and look for expat services in other countries. They'll give you a list of all the services they're doing, and then you can go, Yeah, I can do that, can do that, can do that. Oh, I don't know what that is, but you can find out. Real estate, here we go again. Real estate in the Philippines is crazy money. It, it doesn't really have a set market value. But there's still people wanting real estate. So there's a market for finding good properties. It's always worth working the community around you. 
because people will know when land's up for sale and it's like well this one 3,000 pesos and you can stick it online for four or five because it's worth 10. Um, yeah it is yeah three it costs about three thousand three thousand five hundred or whatever but it's worth a hundred thousand I say hundred thousand. I'm not gonna. I'm a million. I mean, <laughs> I'm just thinking my figures are wrong there. Um, but yeah, there's real estate because a lot of people only think locally. Um, they don't think internet. They don't think outside of the the area they live in. Which means you can actually do them a deal and you a deal because you don't have to be unscrupulous with it. Um, you could actually turn around and get them a fair price and just take your five percent or whatever. Up to you. That's the thing with a lot of this stuff. It's unregulated. Here, here in Spain, the worst culprits for ripping people off are often real estate agents because they're sticking 20,000 or whatever on for themselves. Because you've got to remember, this is how they do it. What they do is they'll say, well, we'll stick 20,000 on and they'll tell you that they'll take it on. So when you then get the house, see your house between 120,000, they'll say, well, we'll put the extra 20,000 on because it's, they'll buy it for 300 they always want a discount they then pocket that 20,000 and then they'll take the 5% off the 300,000 as well that's how business is done uh, rentals I've discussed rentals on another video go and look for it um, rentals can work but they're not going to make you rich but they can make you stable financially but if you tie it in with other bits and pieces you should be fine anyway how are the ants Power of the Ants all gets into these things. Uh, advertising, lead generation, networking, etc. A lot of local population are cheap labour for working online. As such, you can get them to do a lot of the stuff for you. As such, your reach becomes much, much larger. It's worth investing in two, three good people that you work with regularly because they can help this grow phenomenally because you can trust them. Trust is another topic for another day, but these are the main things I would seriously have a think about. And you don't want to be just doing one of these. You want to try and do a few. That is expat life. It's, it's, I suppose they call it the hustle, I suppose. It's where you've got multiple things going on. You're, you're doing business wherever you can. That is how you get ahead. Um, get yourself a whiteboard like mine and then list down what you think you could do what can you do locally what can you do back where you came from what can you do anywhere because you don't want to just focus on one thing um, because this is this well, I was talking to another expert about this recently some of these take time to get started I want to teach English uh, it will take me three to six months to get that to a point where I could sit on my backside and just teach from my desk. Why? Because I've got the marketing, people knowing me, getting my head around, setting all the lesson plans and everything up. It takes time. Some of these will take time, some of them won't. Drop shipping, you can start tomorrow from home. You may not get your first order for six months. Doesn't really matter because you haven't become an expat yet. But the sooner you start some of these, the sooner it starts working. All right. Hope that helps some of you guys. Thanks for watching.